Hello, my dear friends, and thank you for joining me today. For these moments of devotion with our Good Shepherd, I'm going to concentrate on familiar words again from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 17 through 19. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in Christ we have hope in this life only, we are of all people most to be pitied. These verses really are God's guarantee. When St. Paul calls Jesus' resurrection the first fruits of those who have risen from the dead, he's not only reminding people that God has a stake in the game, he's reminding them of God's faithfulness in all things. First fruits talk is harvest talk. It's about God's faithfulness to provide all that we need in our relationship with him. Israel would give the first tenth of the fruits of the field back to the Lord. Why? Because they were acknowledging his faithfulness in bringing forth not only the first sheaves of the harvested grain, but all the rest to follow. They were celebrating God's enduring faithfulness, first acknowledging him as the one who had always and would always fulfill his promises when he has a stake in the game. But we have a problem, don't we? Even with such good news, we strive for what I call hopeless hope. Most are looking everywhere else but the cross and the empty tomb of Jesus, looking for life's meaning and purpose and power. Many people today, if they believe in anything resembling resurrection, they believe it's a power that they possess, a work they can do. If not, they don't believe in it at all. Hopeless hope. We get our hopes up. We make our grand plans. We follow our clever schemes. But our schemes come to nothing. Our knowledge always seems incomplete just when we need it the most. Our hopes are eventually dashed. Our modern temptation, though, is to continue to believe that the next technology will save us. In a world that's moving fast on an unstable course, we need something solid upon which to hang our hopes. We need to repent of our reliance on hopeless hope, and we need to see what God has put in its place, a life-giving hope in Christ alone. God the Father doesn't just offer eternal life. He embodies it for you in the resurrection of his Son. His resurrection guarantee is not just for tomorrow. It's for living today. His resurrection is your destiny. His blessing is your promise. Easter faith repents of hopeless hope and receives joyfully what the Lord has for you. Today, you and I are invited to leave behind the confining walls of hopeless hope. We're invited to a life of faith, to repent of our trust in humanity's bravado and to trust in Christ's resurrection hope. We are invited to surrender our lives to the one who lived, died, and rose again for each of us. Join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, keep an Easter faith vibrant in our hearts. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, my friends, may you not have a hopeless hope, but a resurrection hope in all the promises and goodness of God.